Good morning, Dos Sizzle Nation. Pudding. What's up? And our star of our show, Dos Sizzle, here. We're out, we're out about 10 miles out of Boca Inlet. We're gonna be doing some deep dropping today in about 900 feet of water with a very expensive reel over here. Darcy's baiting up with some squid right now. You never know what you're gonna catch down here 900 feet down. Barrel fish, tile fish, rosies, all kinds of crazy critters. We're gonna get these squid down to the bottom and show you what we get. Let's go. All right, first drop. Let's go. We are ready. We're seven, all squidded up. Seven pound weight. Ready, Sizzle? Yeah, keep it nice drops. Now we're using about seven pound weight and about 900 feet of water on a huge chicken rig, like with five hooks on it. And I'm gonna drive the boat and keep, keep it one spot with the current and she's gonna work the rod. It's all about watching this rod tip. It makes a little beep. I mean, she's fishing 900 feet down, so you know. I, yeah. know you, I know you guys think electric reels aren't fishing, but. You're fishing. This is a, <laughs> definitely a finesse game, for sure. Come on. <laughs> hook up, hook We also up. haven't done this in a, a long time. We haven't even been on a boat in a month. We went to the Keys. Crazy, man. And then we went to the Keys again with Mighty Mutton Man, and then we've been doing some other stuff, and we haven't been on our boat in a month. It's crazy. We've been fishing, just not haven't been on our actual boat, like you said, this big boat in particular. So we went local right. and we're just kind of getting our kinks out. <laughs> Whatever things that might go wrong with the boat today, at least we're close to home and so far so good. So yeah. Fingers crossed. And hopefully we get some fish in the boat here. Yeah, so we just shoot, we have those Seymour maps now. Thanks a lot, thanks so much Seymour. And they give you a great 3D representation of the bottom. It's 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 a phenomenal addition to, to your uh, sonar and GPS and everything like that. So we're going to some spots we found on Seymour and just, you know, we're having a nice day out here, really. Oh my God, sorry, we had fish on. I, I was fighting with a bird. Literally. Do you see this? I've never heard in my life. Dude, this bird <laughs> dove down 30 feet, like to go get my fish. It was crazy. But we did have some fish on there. A awesome. Lot more than I thought. We saw some little head chicks. I was right. Check it out, guys. Nice. That's a little baby, but maybe we can throw that one back. Second drop of the day. Yeah, we definitely can. Second drop of the day. Look at it. That. Three black belly rosefish. Yeah, that one's a good size. So those two are a little small. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's, Let's get them get off this real guy quick. Off right now. Hopefully this bird's not here. Yes, he is. He's gonna try to eat this thing. I can't believe this seabird. Jerk. Nice. Now these are delicious. These are black belly rosefish, often called sculpins, and uh, they actually live. This big one could be like 30 years old. Yes. And uh, the ocean is covered with them, so I think there's no limits. You don't got to take a ton of them. Just get a couple. The cool thing about them is they have no swim bladder. You can go right back down to the bottom, 900 feet. Go, go, go! Hey, go! Bird! Bird! <laughs> he can't get it. Oh, you should be filming that shit. No. Should watch that would be so cool. <laughs> he gave up. He gave up. Thank goodness. <laughs> All right, let's okay. get the other little and one. And our Rosie is going to the bottom. All nice right, guys. One. That is a black belly rosefish. And you can see the mouth pretty dark in there. Black. So that's where they get the name black belly rosefish. But that's a nice one. All right, let's drop it again, Sizzle. You ready? I'm ready. You're dropping it down? Yeah, so we're dropping our line to the bottom. Current's going behind us to so straight north. And we're driving south into the current currently, so we can basically separate that line, get it way far away from the boat, hit the bottom, and then Brian will just barely keep the boat in gear to keep that bow pointed straight to the south, and we're gonna drift back on our line. So it's kind of hard to explain, other than if, uh, hopefully you understood that, but that's basically the gist of it. And then we'll do a long drift and bring it back up when we feel like we're not in a fishy area or we got bites. All right, just hit bottom. Okay. okay. Oh yeah. Well, that's fish, for sure. <laughs> Basically, we're using circle hooks down there, big 8-0 circle hooks that are heavy duty, and circle hooks are gonna do their job and hook those fish. But, look at the rod tip. But you'll see these fish biting, and then occasionally I'll take a couple, like 20 feet of line up, just to make sure he did get hooked. So you can kind of do what you want and works best for you, but again, if you're using circle hooks, you really don't need to do that. That's just my thing. Yeah, you want, you know, you got five hooks on there, so you want to try and get, if you're catching rosies, you want to try and get a couple of rosies on there, just like you saw I got three before. So you don't want to just roll it up, reel it up on the first fish. Right. I'm going to drop it one more time. Woo, that's bites. That's bites. <laughs> I, I can't see him either, don't worry. Just she can see him. That was definitely a bite. You can see, watch the rod tip real close. I really just the tip of the rod. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, a little bite. You can barely see it. Yes. Coming up, let's see what we got. 
there's something on there. 20. Hey, hey, I knew it. Those are studs. Those are studs. Get them, Brian. Oh, they're floating off, they're baby. Studs. No, 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 no. Off. Come on, baby. No, no, no. The one just got off, a big one. Where? He's down there. He already swam down to the bottom. I'll grab this. Three massive ones. I think he was the biggest one. Son of a gun. Oh, that last one is huge. Dude, the one that just came off the hook was bigger. Really? Yeah, he's already 100 foot down. Oh, man. Crazy. Nice fish. Yeah. Way to go, no sizzle. That was a yeah. monster. That's like as big as they get right there. Yeah, no joke. We had three on there, and unfortunately, in that little pause, you know, they're ripping big holes in their mouth all the, all the way up from 900 feet deep. So these circle hooks eventually just dig holes in there, and that's what happens. It'll just come out. But you know what? That's okay. We got two stud rosies, no complaints. Every drop, we're releasing a fish so far. So it was perfect. I mean, this one got hooked real well. He wasn't going nowhere. Nice. Beautiful fish. That's a big one, but this one is a, like, that's a lunker. Like, yeah. that's the biggest you're ever going to find. Oh, yeah. Definitely. And I believe with the black belly rose fish, 25 to 30 years old is like the average largest fish. They're very slow growing. And again, this is a really big one. This is a monster. Whoa. Big one. Nice. Look These at those crazy eyes. They live on the bottom in the mud. They have to look up at all times for predators and for food or anything they want. So those eyes are just positioned in the upward position. That's how he looks at you from the ocean floor. Pretty cool. Yeah, sick. Beautiful. Let's see what you got. Don't get excited. I'm always excited with you in your bikini. Good job. I knew there was a couple on there. Nice. Whoa. Don't scratch my gel coat. Whoa, whoa, whoa. All right. Nice. Oh, boy. Nice. So, should we send that little one back? Sure. All right, let's do it right away. Yeah. All right, guys, drop it again. We're trying different spots and trying, you know, we're, we're kind of new to the Jeep dropper thing, but we changed our rig. I've been tying rigs with 130 pound mono and just some 8.0 two times strong hooks. And they do get kind of twisted up. And so we've also bought some rigs from r, r Tackle, which is like one of, one of the, top, the top guys go to r, r Tackle, get your sabikis there and stuff. And so we're trying one of their rigs right now. So again, just trying different things. We're using Squid for Bait yes. and our LP. It's like a $6,000 reel, but uh, it's the best. And we use it for sword fishing. And then a 65 pound braid on it. And you need that kind of reel here because we have, you know, when you're fishing 900 to 2,000 feet deep in three knot current, you know, yeah, that's, what you, that's what you gotta do. That's what people do here. Yeah. I know it's not a Ned rig, but. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not. It's not a Ned rig. All right, we got 11,000 revolutions out. 11, Sorry, 1,100. 1,100. It's about, I'm gonna drop it neutral just to let that weight hit the bottom, and then, let, then I'm gonna put it back in gear to. We're gonna scope out some more. Yeah, to slow down our drift so it actually keeps it on the back. So basically, as Dodge was saying before, the current's gonna push me backwards. I'm gonna regulate it a little bit, but she's gonna be poking up line as the boat goes back. We just hit. Just hit. 1,300 revolutions. Pretty good. And now we watch the rod tip. Now we watch the tip. And we fish the baits. And we fish the baits. All right, let's see if we got anything. There's something down there? There's a fish right there. There's a fish. Wow, it's a, this thing's not twisted up though, that's the point. Yes, yes. All right guys, we did catch a little teeny shark. This happens. What kind of shark is this, Sizzle? Isn't that the six gill? Maybe. Is it six gill? One, two, three. It only has five Not gills, five. but this hook is in here really good. Hey. Oh, there we go. All right. Let's get him back in the water really fast. There he goes. Nice. Go down. <laughs> he will. He's just swimming around like crazy. All right. We're coming up again. We got another fish. We'll see. We definitely got a fish. We'll see. I'm gonna guarantee we got something. Whoa! Uh, you, you don't want to guarantee nothing in fishing. What? I know all every minute. He's like, "Oh, look at that! Look at that! Look at that! Fish! Fish! Fish!" I wishful thinking. Five revolutions. Don't count your fishes before they're hatched. Hundred revolutions. Mark a bunch of fish on the machine on the Lowrance. Yeah, our Lowrance with the Seymour. We found this spot. Bring it over, says all. Right, I'm trying. I know. It's hard. I can't see it. On the way over there. I don't want to break the rod tip. I know, I know. They're scoping out. Why? Because they're floating groupers. 
No. No, they look like all rosies. Stringer! That was right. Go, go, go. Start lifting. Okay. Monsters. Nice. Hold on. Whoa, look at those rosies. All right, who was right? I was right. I said it would guarantee a fish, and I was telling Brian the entire time I thought we had a stringer. There's just one hook without a fish on there. Delicious, and they're really big ones once again. Yeah, those are nice, that was a great catch. Woo, nice ones. Right in the corner of the mouth. Yeah. You ready to show these folks how to clean these fish, Dust Sizzle? I'm ready. Back at the house, guys. It's 500 degrees out here. Woo. See, out my boo -boo's getting, wind. My boo boo's getting better. Yes. We tried to do this during, it was cloudy because it gets so hot in Florida and it just came out real quick. What do you got going on here, Sizzle? Yeah, that's how it works when we're filming. It always, the sun always comes out right when we start filming or something weird happens. But yeah, we're gonna be setting up here. Just wanna get cleaned up. I already flayed a few fish. I got my knife super sharp. Brian's showing you that some of the tools that I use to get my knife sharp because yeah. of course, if you have a fillet knife, the other most important tool besides the knife is the sharpener. So we have a couple different diamond sharpeners here which is very simple to use and also these pull-throughs if you're not comfortable with the stainless steel. Yeah, I was gonna say, a lot of times people ask us, we, we gotta do a video on sharpeners, but yes. a lot of times people ask, what's a sharpener? This is like one of her favorites, very easy to use. Again, it's a pull-through, it's adjustable. And of course, Darcy's code works on everything at Smith's yes. uh, products.com. So, so you're gonna get pocket knives, camera equipment, every sharpener in the world. Right, if you're a newbie to sharpening, you know they have that basic stuff like the pull-through I just, Brian just showed you. All right, so there's no good way to hold these fish. Ouch. They are so spiny. They're full of all kinds of crazy spines. I heard they Even... were venomous too now. All really? Of a sudden. Yeah. Venomous. Someone, so our friend, actually our friend, I, so our friend Greg Keats, who's a, a guy, a local guy, he said, uh, I had a conversation, oh, you're yeah, venomous, but the venom is so low, like we don't even treat them as venomous. Huh. I did, I did Google it. All right, well, I already drew blood, so. Yeah, but the, the venom is like so light that. Oh. It would never affected us at all, ever, and we don't pay any attention to it, but I guess they're officially yeah. slightly venomous. All right, so here we go. We're gonna dive into this. This is a couple of the bigger um, black belly rose fish that we caught. This is gonna be some of the whitest meat you have ever seen on a fish. Just snow white, absolutely delicious, because of course they live down there in the depths and whatever critters they eat, I don't really know, but it makes them delicious. So let's dive right into this. We're gonna be using my six inch curve fillet knife, our sizzle knife. And like I said, I already got it sharpened up. This is an easier fish to fillet, but you see this large gill plate, you're gonna go way up underneath that so you can get as much head meat as possible because they have this massive head and a really big mouth so they can inhale big stuff down there. And then we're just gonna go down his back, but you can see here how like the skin here is really, really thin. And it's very easy to cut through. So you just take your time if you're not used to filleting black belly rosefish. And then that's where the flex of my blade comes in and I'm just gliding it right on the edge of his bones. It's a little bit of an awkward fish to fillet, but they're not that big. And look at that meat. It is like oh my snow Lord, white, so gorgeous. No, I did not bleed these fish by the way, y'all. And there is one fillet. And he has a big rib cage and an empty belly there. We're just gonna flip them over, do the same exact thing. And now you can really see how large that gill plate is and the head is. But right underneath that gill plate is where you want to go. Stick your knife in and go underneath it and go up into the head as far as you can. And then bound it back again. And we're just going to stick to the same knife because this is just like the perfect size fillets for like fish sandwiches or any kind of like fish tacos. These are just delicious. And it's been a minute since we've had some black belly rose fish. All right, and then they got little pin bones up here. Very easy to break through. It's not tough like a grouper or a snapper. And then this other filet will come right off. Boom, all right, so that fish is done. Let's put them over to the side, but you see how much head they have? You really don't get as much meat as you might think. There's just a lot of head meat there. And we're gonna be feeding our canal fish with those carcasses. <laughs> all right, and then we're gonna take these loins and we're just gonna use the same knife. Like I said, it's easy to cut through this very thin skin that they have and their scales are not that uh, hardy at all. So I just keep my knife up a little bit so I don't cut through it. Flip it over and you can see there's not even a bloodline. It's just like the gorgeous piece of meat you have ever seen. And then we do the same exact thing on this side. 
and there'll be a couple little bones in there, but it's not the end of the world. It's very easy to remove. And then just keep your knife close to the edge of the table. And now we got two delicious black belly rosefish loins. All right, so I'm gonna finish up all these fish and then we're gonna head inside this house for the cooking with pudding portion of this video. All right, thanks so much, Dr. Sizzle, for cleaning up those beautiful black belly rosefish. These things are so delicious. Delicious white flaky meat like you saw. And welcome, guys, to another edition of Cooking with Puddin'. This time, we're making one of my favorite sauces. Oh, fish is done, fish is done. All right, hop in here. I'm already almost done with the fish, you can see. And one of my favorite things about this particular, back it up, Sizzle, they wanna see my handsome face, is that we're gonna use this same pan to make a delicious sauce. And even, I might even leave some of the fish in here, and I'm gonna chop it up and keep those pieces in here. So this sauce is very simple. It's a lemon butter basil sauce with some other ingredients in there. Let's get right to it. All right, now you can see I got all these nice juicy pieces of fish in here. I've turned the heat way down because otherwise you're just gonna burn everything up. First, we're gonna add some butter. Let that melt in there. All right, then we got a cup of whipping cream and you know pudding just kind of messes this up or does it by taste. Make sure you got that heat turned down so you don't burn all this stuff up. All right, now they got that heat up, we're gonna add lemon. The real recipe is one lemon, but I just do it to taste. You can always add a little later. There we go, whisk it in. All right, now we got a bouillon cube and we're gonna press some garlic in there. You know, again, as much garlic as you want. Stir it up. Then you're gonna add some the basil. You can put the basil at the end or right now, whatever, Darcy likes me to put it right now. You can see this is looking pretty good already. All right, at this point you taste it, salt, pepper, whatever you want to do. If you want thicker, add a little butter. But this is going to get pretty thick, as you can see right here. And that's really about it. All right, guys, that's plate. Sizzle, bring it down. You can see we already got some nice asparagus on there. That is Darcy's favorite thing to, to eat. I got to find my spatula. Where to go, Sizzle? Or is it going to delicious fish? And then here we go. You can see those chunks of fish in there. Look at that. Delicious. All right. All right, the Party. sizzle. No, no. All right, guys, so remember the, the, the knives and anything Darcy talks about during the video or I talk about like Seymour Maps or Lorance, all those links are in, always in the description. And of course, you can always Google that. Dar sizzle knife, you can Google that or whatever. Uh, let me taste it. And it's so good. I'm just gonna continue to eat here because I'm absolutely famished. Mm. I haven't eaten all day, so this is just heaven. This is delicious. Now these rosies can cook these just like any other snapper, but this is a little bit firmer than like a yellowtail. Love mm. it, guys. So until next time. <laughs> Follow your dream and keep, keep on, on catching. It's so good. Don't forget to check out this next video. We picked it out just for you. And subscribe and like and share. Yes. Please.